Hi guys, George with Thoughts in Motion here once again. Today we're going to talk a little bit about humility and how we uh, converse with other people in our everyday lives. Those we care about, even the guy on the street, it can be very important. Let's do it. Today guys we're going to talk about effective communication and how we can work this aspect of humility into that. What we're really looking to achieve is um, good communication with the people that we care about most. Could be the person that you love most in the world, could be your parents, could be a child, could be the person that you meet on the street. In all cases effective communication will lead you to a better future. Okay so first we'll like a look at what is humility. Humility is about being receptive to other people's feelings and acknowledging that no one can be 100% right, even yourself. You could be so assured that your position is absolutely flawless, you have all the arguments, all the evidence possible to say that your worldview is the best. But you cannot be 100% right because, like it or not, everyone's feelings are valid and usually arguments come down to a conflict of interests and feelings. So what we often see when we get into arguments is that we go into something which isn't quite what we want and we call this the parent-child complex. What we notice is that one person takes on the role of the critical parent and starts demonising the other person saying that they're either being ridiculous, hysterical, like you're absolutely worthless, being so overbearing on that person that they can't help but regress into a childlike state and say you don't understand me, I just want to be heard, like what have I done to upset you, that sort of thing. You can see here that this paradigm doesn't work at all, it doesn't lead to a solution that works for both parties and both parties could indeed be somewhat valid in what they're saying. The parent could be right in saying that the child is being overly emotional, they could be right in saying that they're not perceiving the situation in perhaps the most logical of ways. But also the child has some valid points as well, saying that they just want to be understood and their feelings to be heard and known. And that's valid in itself because in effective communication it's all about having your feelings communicated and being empathetic with the other person. And that's our role in taking responsibility, is hearing the other person out, listening to what they've got to say and actually listening carefully, not just thinking what am I going to say to make a rebuttal to them, because that is getting into argument mode. And the most important thing to remember is that nobody wins in an argument because all that happens in an argument is one person just tries to win over the other and it becomes a competition. That's not what we want in effective communication. We actually want to get to the root cause of the problems that these two people are facing, mutually resolve them and get to a common ground in the middle, this conversation between two adults, that will allow a proper solution to be established. So how do we do this then? Like We need some like everyday examples, right? A good way of trying to get out of this parent-child mode is to stop using absolute statements such as I disagree or that's wrong because all of these words are saying your opinion doesn't matter, it's invalid and my opinion is superior. Again we're going into that competitive mode which doesn't actually formulate any sort of solution. So what we should instead try and look at is try to acknowledge that other person's being and say okay I see what you're saying there. I see it in a slightly different way. But that's all it is, it's saying that your opinion isn't invalid, but here's another way perhaps of looking at it which might be more reasonable, it might be a bit more broad, to try and get them to just see things from multiple perspectives. Once you've got those multiple viewpoints on the table, you can pick and choose from them which have good points, which have bad points, because most likely none of the viewpoints will be 100% correct, none of the perspectives will be reality. People often say that it takes talking about it to actually get to the bottom of an issue and they're absolutely right this is the exact process that they mean is picking the good points from each of the viewpoints that you've stated to say okay how do we bring these all together into a compromised solution which actually makes us both winners in the situation and so then we can start asking a few deeper questions such as why are you feeling this way what exact emotions are you experiencing and what does good look like to try and solve those problems that you're having right now. That last one is the most important of all. What does good look like to you? What sort of solution do you need or would you accept that would make this situation better? Because often it's not going to be a fairy tale ending. 
even after finding a solution, it might still have to be a compromise. They might still be feeling a bit miffed by the whole thing, but they're certainly in a better position than what they were. And this is the important thing, is that you can't concede absolutely every single point to them if that invalidates your own feelings. You have to consider yourself as well, saying that my opinions matter, my feelings matter, and I will be heard, but also acknowledging their feelings matter, their opinions matter, and they will be heard also. By getting on an equal footing in that way, you can work towards that joint solution, which may not be the perfect solution, and things rarely are perfect like this, but it's a solution in which you've both come out better than you were before. So that's the importance of asking the questions why, and being a bit more probing in trying to work out how the other person's feeling because that will mean that the solutions that you come up with will be more mutually beneficial to both of you and actually solve the problem at hand instead of either covering up with something else or completely missing the point which might just be a short-term solution and not actually resolve the underlying issues. So I hope these tips have been helpful for you. I've also written a blog post about this topic at thoughtsinmotion.co.uk which takes this at a slightly different angle and is intended to supplement the video. Those are the kind of videos I'll be doing in the future which will supplement my blog posts and make them a more holistic experience, coming at it from slightly different ways so that you can understand better. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Thoughts in Motion UK. You can also subscribe to us on Facebook and Instagram, also at Thoughts in Motion UK. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Take care.